Hi, I'm Cani Reza. Welcome to Amazing Science Lessons. And I am here demonstrating Lessons Day 7 and uh, on the unit of insects. How do we start a science lesson with our novelty? And remember, our novelty is the same every day. Every day that I'm doing the study of insects, I'm going to show the same novelty. Why? Because this helps children continue to connect to the very first day. Wow, when they first got to see their novelty for the first time and they saw the big insect in front of them. We continue to connect to the study of insects through this one. Changing it will get the children a little bit more, uh, their brain a little bit more, re they have to rearrange and refocus. So do your novelty and select your novelty very carefully. Now through the insect, let's review. So I'm going to spend time reviewing. And of course, yesterday we talked about foods. So today I may want to, I may want to just review foods instead of going through everything. But one thing that I will review every day is how many parts does an insect have. If anything, through, during the study of insects, I want our pre cares to remember an insect has three parts. It has six legs. It has two antennas. That is mainly the main thing that I want him to remember. Well, today, let me give you our specific objective. We are going to observe and go on a nature walk to look for insects. Now, of course, I can take our camera outside and observe. So I have done pictures. And what we're going to do, we're going to do a geometric observation out on our lawn. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give, I'm going to put out these shapes, which are excellent. And these are made with PVC uh, tubing. Here's a rectangle. And this is a uh, circle, which is also a tube, uh, like a hose that was put together. And then a square. And these are big enough so that children are able to observe. Let me show you what I'm going to do. When we go outside, I'm going to lay this on the lawn and children are going to stay focused only within this area of the geometric shape. So I'm going to assign groups. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to get my square group, I'm going to get my rectangle group, and I'm going to get my circle group. And for video purpose, I, have, I took pictures, so I want you to take a look at the pictures. This is the way they will look when I lay them outside. And then I'm going to have some groups. And of course, I have, I have several of these. I have like two or three circles, two or three squares, and uh, two or three rectangles. Because I don't want so many children crowded around one of the shapes. So again, I'm reinforcing shapes. I want children to understand what a shape is. And then, of course, I want them to use their observation skills. And for this, every child is going to get a magnet, hand magnifier. And then let me show you some pictures of what I took while we were outside. Let me put this one right here. Here's one of my students. She's on the rectangle. She's got her magnifier, and she's searching for insects in their own environment. So what I want her to do, I want all the children to do, is to observe the behavior of insects. What are the insects doing as they dig in between the, the grass roots? And look all the way to the ground and see what you see. Now, uh, here she is again, a little more tuned in and has discovered a couple more things. And I could hear her say, oh, I see a little ant in there. Oh, she's moving as I move the branches. Also, some children may want to explore from one uh, shape to the other. So here, uh, I had, while, while she was moving around, I also took some pictures. And I want you to see that children continue to observe. And they think, especially the younger ones, the four-year-olds, they think that if they go to another shape, they're going to get to see different insects. So they also like to be exploring and say, well, if I go to a square, will I see different types of insects? Well, go try it out. Go see. 
And of course, some uh, some children will want a, a blanket. They may not want to sit on the crest because you know what? After they have observed and they've seen insects, now they don't want to sit on the ground because they feel like an ant might get on them or an insect might get on them. So also provide blankets. Now after they finish their little exploration uh, exploration outside, and we'll spend plenty of time outside. Like I said, children like to hop from one to the other. But what's so interesting is that children tune in only into that shape. Even though they go to a square and then they want to move on to a circle, they'll stay within their little shape, which is very interesting. And of course, I do want children to focus and to be a little more structured instead of moving all over and trying to figure out where. So you're giving them a specific location. Now when I bring the children back, and they've, of course they've used their magnifier outside, I don't have paper outside for them to draw because I want children to mainly explore. I want them to investigate. I don't want them worried about a pencil, about a paper, especially four-year-olds, even kindergartners. They want to explore. They want to find an insect in there. They want to investigate, which is very, very interesting. When they come back, again, remember, I love to have little pieces of papers because now when they come back, I'm going to say, I want you to draw one insect that you observed while you were out there. Whether it was in your circle, in the square, I want you to draw one insect. So let me show you how I do this. Let me get on my graph. And now we're going to reconnect to where insects live. A couple of days back, the children drew their homes. And we started touching up on where insects live. Well, today, after doing the observation and after investigating, let's see, where do you see the insect? When you come and put your insect up that you drew, I want you to tell me, was it above the ground or was it under the ground? So here's a little girl that comes over and she says, I saw an ant and the ant was walking on the, on the ground. And I, I, I moved the, the shrubs and I saw her walking. Another child would probably come and say, Oh, I saw the head of a little worm now. And he was under the ground. He was under. Now, whether he saw that or not, I take his word for it. Because you know what? He's my little scientist that was out there investigating. And he probably was digging deep in there into the, to try to find some insects under the ground. Another child will come and say, Well, I saw one trying to dig himself out of the dirt. And he was almost on the top. Very interesting. It's very interesting the observation that you'll get from children. And then another one will come. Well, I saw one walking on a little branch. They were walking next to each other. Another child will probably come and say, No, I saw one going under. He was under digging. Like a little beetle it looked like. So... This is a good way to help children understand and see whether they, whatever they investigate outside, you allow them to explore and investigate. Well, you know what? Why did, did you have a hard time looking at the insects? Did you, could you identify them? What about this one? A child brought in, uh, so a, uh, a ladybug. How come he could see the ladybug so clearly? Probably because the ladybug is bright red and, and uh, black. Here's a little, here's a book, a literature. Let's connect through literacy. Where's that insect? Where is the insect? And as we start searching into our book, now can you find insects in here? Why do you have a hard time finding insects? They're in their environment. What else? They become like the color of their environment. They camouflage. So we're introducing new words. Insects tend to camouflage. Sometimes an insect, when he's on the, on the branch, he'll be green. When he gets on the ground, he'll be brown. 
insects do change color. So let's read about insects. Look at this one. Here's honeybees. Now can you tell that there's honeybees here? It's very hard to see the honeybee because they're in their own environment. They're in the honeycomb. They're the same color. Look at this ones. Wow, there's a whole bunch of ladybugs, but they camouflage with the flowers. So this is an excellent book to introduce and to help children understand why did they have a hard time finding insects? How come children were running from one shape to the other because they couldn't see insects? The insects probably were there, but they had a hard time. Let the children explore first. Then it's very interesting when you start introducing your literacy. Through literacy, they can find out a lot more information. Now, let's go into technology. What if we type in, where do insects live? Oh, that would be very interesting because then we can see where insects live and we can see some of their homes that some of the some of the uh, insects are probably on branches all the time some of them are probably on leaves all the time and some are probably on the ground so that is very interesting for children to continue to explore through the internet and of course our final question is share one thing you can tell me about what you learned through your exploration walk. One thing you learned. Let the ch children share what they learned in their experience. This concludes our uh, lesson demonstration for today. And let's tune in to see how we continue to extend this unit into the following day. Thank you.